My name's Kevin Barrett, also known as KB Barman. YouTube, Instagram, kbbarman.com. I'm the founder of Dram and Draft. Uh, I do have a partner, but um, you know, we started this bar five years ago in Raleigh. Um, we have an interesting story there. We started in a little service station. They redeveloped our entire block and we had to actually move to a new tower that they just built. Uh, we did that in 2019. We're shut down for about a month, reopened, had about six months under our belt. And then the pandemic happened. I don't know if you all remember that, but 2020 was a doozy for us. I think it was for everyone, but we made it through that. And now Raleigh, that, that bar is five years plus old. We also have a location in, Dur or, uh, in Greensboro. That's in an old service station. So it reminds me of the original, original Raleigh location. Uh, and that's been around for three plus years now. And then of course we're here in Durham. This is our newest location. This is two months old, two months old. Um, but it's been going great here. And again, the pandemic got in the way of us opening here, but it's been a warm reception. We're happy to be here. Uh, my qualifications, I'm an executive bourbon steward. I'm a sommelier, I'm a Cicerone. People call me an alcoholic wizard. I like to call myself a wizard of alcohol. Um, but I know, I mean, I've made cocktails forever. All the area bars in, in Raleigh, I've worked at most of them or have friends or I've worked with the people that run those bars. Uh, I've actually bartended on three different continents. I've consulted up and down the Eastern seaboard and in the Caribbean. That was a nice job. Uh, and I, it's just, it's kind of my specialty. So uh, that's what we're going to do today. We're going to make, we're going to learn how to make these specific drinks. But while we do that, we're going to learn some basics about making drinks that hopefully can carry over to other recipes that you see online or maybe have at home. So the first drink that we're going to start with is called the, okay, one programming note. Oh yeah, this, this. This event actually helps with the United Way, yes. Oh, we raised $700 for United Way. That's pretty good. All right. That's good for, a, yeah, for a, a fun class like this. Um, that's great. You guys should all be proud of yourselves. Yeah. Yeah. And everyone at home. Yeah. All, we all did this together. I don't see anybody anymore. All right. Okay. <laughs> they come back every once in a while when I call them out. So, okay, the, the, these drinks that we have are, were featured in our state magazine. So that's kind of what, what, what prompted this event. We wanted to go over these drinks. Uh, and of course, like many things, this got delayed a little bit. I think originally we wanted to do this back in August. Is that right? Maybe. But we were waiting for a bar oh. called uh, Dram and Draft Durham to open. Oh. So we finally got open and now, now we're doing this class. And these drinks were really designed for summertime, but I think they have a good summer fall feel to them. And it's mostly about flavors for me, like palate changes depending on the season. So the first one is a peach and basil uh, whiskey Collins, basically. Uh, I think we call it a lemonade. I guess we can call it a lemonade. Um, and does anybody want to come up here and help me make this drink? Come this way. I need you on this side. Okay. Uh, my name's Kevin. Shantavia. Shantavia. Yes. Shantavia. Okay. okay. Thank you for helping. All right. So we're going to make four drinks total. Okay. We're going to make one, two, three, four. I'll split mine with Lisa. Okay. So usually when I do this, since we're shaking this drink, we're going to shake all our drinks today. We can talk more about that in a minute. Okay. At most, I do two and one, one shaking two. Okay. And I'm going to show you the first one. And then if you want, you can build the second one. Okay. But I start off, I put all the ingredients in the small shaker, unless we have something like a modifier, and a modifier would be herbs, egg white, something like that, okay? And in this drink, we have a couple modifiers, okay? Uh, basil, optional, do you like basil? I do. Okay, so we're gonna use basil in, in all the drinks, okay? I, I like the way the basil plays with the peach. In this. So grab me a couple sprigs, just rip them right off of that, that plant there. Okay, so that's enough for, I'd say, one drink. So now we have, let's say two, three, give me just a couple more leaves. It smells so good. Okay, so let's 
There we go. A couple more. I'm going to save this one. Maybe we can use that sprig as a garnish. We'll see. We'll see. All right. And now we want to we want to muddle our leaves a little bit, right? Okay. And have you ever muddled anything? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Will you hand me that muddle over there? Because I'm going to do it, and I'm going to let you do it. Okay. So when we muddle things, a lot of times you're in a bar, and they just start pulverizing things. You don't want to do that, especially when it's herbs, mint, especially basil, anything fragile like this, you really just want to press down on it, turn a little bit. You just want to express a little bit of those oils. So go ahead and do that. No pulverizing, right? Express those oils a little bit. Okay? That's it. All right. Good. Done with that for the moment. Now we have another modifier too. We have our peach jam. Okay? And I would say this jam this jam we made. I'm not asking you to make your jam at home, but uh, if you do, good on you. Um, but use a high quality jam. You know, use your favorite jam. I, I just like something that's pretty simple with the ingredients. It's peaches, pectin, and sugar. You know, uh, the more ingredients, the the lower quality is. I think with this. So this is. I, I'm going to count this one as a modifier too. So I'm going to put it just right on top of the the basil, okay, and the large sugar. I'm going to do one keeping spoonful, and this will vary depending on the jam you're using and how much you enjoy the jam, but that's good. That's a good one right there. Do one more. Okay. All right. So that's, we're making two drinks. Keep in mind. So we did two heaping spoonfuls. Now let's uh, put our liquid ingredients into the smaller shaker. Okay. That's how I usually do it. If you don't do that at home, that's all right. It's not going to hurt my feelings. <laughs> I'm just going to show you how we do it here at the bar. And at the bar, we start off with the least expensive ingredient, okay? The reason for that, if we mess up and we have to dump something out, we're dumping out sugar or <laughs> citrus. We're not dumping out liquor, right? We're dumping pennies, not dollars. Okay. Does that make sense? Makes sense? And at home, you do it however you want. It's no big deal. Yeah, even at the bar, sometimes I put the liquor in first. It's just the way it happens sometimes. But that's the reason we do it that way in the bar. So I'm going to grab my measuring device, my... Uh, Japanese jigger here. We're going to start off with our citrus first, okay? I'll do it first, and then you're going to do it, okay? okay? All right, so uh, this the measurements here is a, it's a bit on the acidic side. So we have one full ounce of our fresh lemon juice, if you have it. And see how I went all the way up to the top, right? Mm -hmm. Now, this is one ounce on this side. This side is two ounces. Since we're doing two, you can just use that large side if you want, but I did two one ounce pours just to show that it's one ounce per drink. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and do that. And give me that, that, that small shaker there. All right, that's, that's a pretty great job there. Right. You, you don't have the meniscus on the first one. <laughs> That's, that's, a, that's a full measurement. That's how it's hard to do sometimes. Okay, and now even though we have that jam in there, which is sweet, we're still going to put a little bit of our simple syrup in there, which is just one-to-one -one sugar to, um, to water. And this is the simplest of simple syrups. It's just white granulated sugar, one cup of sugar, one cup of water. And we're going to do just three-quarters of an ounce, okay? Per drink. Per drink, yes. We keep that in a small shaker. And now on your shaker, you, you probably see that line uh -huh. up there. That's a three quarter ounce mark. Great. Great. Okay, now I feel like we have all our ingredients. Notice there's one thing missing, the ice, right? We don't put the ice in there until we're ready to make the drink because as soon as this starts touching the ice, starts doing the job for us, right? Okay. So you don't want to put the ice in there and then put all the ingredients on top, then get distracted and walk away and then come back and you have a watered down drink, right? Okay. If you have too much, uh, you know, if you overshake it or if you dilute it too much, you're just going to have a watery diluted drink. Nobody wants that. So you put the ice in there when we're ready to make the drink. Ice is your friend. I'm also your friend. <laughs> ice is definitely your friend when you're making cocktails. So the reason I leave this one 
empty except for the modifiers is here. I can put all of that ice in there, right? Lots of ice. I'm gonna help you out. I'm gonna bar oh, back for you a little bit. I'm gonna put lots of ice in there for you. All right. Now's the hard part. Now's when you have to work, okay? <laughs> Once you take all our liquid ingredients, pour it on there, okay? Give it a good whack. We want a good seal, okay? Good. You pick it up. You got a good, no, pick it up later. You have a good seal? Yeah, don't be scared. Oh, okay. don't be scared. Oh, let me know if it's Yeah, you got, a, you got a good seal. There you go. Right. Okay. This is good if you're doing two shakes at once. You need a good seal. So this is the test? That's the test. Okay. Yeah, and actually, when I, you know, when I do it at the bar, it's funny. I just, I whack it, and then when I go to shake, I do this quick shake just to make sure nothing splashes on me. And the reason the smaller shake is on top is if it does splash, it'll splash this way, not onto your guest or okay. your hubby or your <laughs> wife or whoever you're trying to impress, right? Okay. So give me a, a hand on top, hand on bottom, right. over the shoulder. Give me a good shake, right? More than that. Come on. Take it, Take it like you're trying to hurt it. All right. Now we have that seal. We have to break it. Okay, so actually the other side, where there's that heel, that little space there, uh -huh. that's probably going to work better, <laughs> okay. right? There you go. All right. So now we're going to serve this drink in our Collins glasses. These are tall glasses over ice, fresh ice. I don't want to reuse it. We've got our fancy cold draft cubes here. All right, sit right there. Now, we take our Hawthorne strainers here. Mm -hmm. Now, a little move we're gonna do is we're gonna close the gate. You see that? Okay. Everyone at home, you close the gate, you push down. This is what these are designed for. That gives you maximum strain. The other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use these cocoa strainers or tea strainers okay. and this, we do it for most of our drinks. But especially when you use modifiers. And when you're using herbs and jam and stuff like that, things you want to filter out of there. <laughs> you want to use those tea strainers. Now, this there's something, something important we need to learn here, okay? What we just did, we did the virgin version. I was like, where's the, yeah. We missed all the good stuff, the most important part. You're supposed to remind me of that. Oh, oh wait, did you all want virgin? No. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Apparently somebody was hitting that bottle before we started and we must have forgot. Okay, so appreciate your help. Let me go through this real fast and let me make you all a version of this drink. Okay. So we get a, a cocktail in your hands. Um, so give me one second. That's what we're gonna do, make sure we do it right, okay? We're gonna get our basil. We do it bartender quick, maybe, if I still have it. I'm not sure if I still have it. Okay. Oh, I want to make. <laughs> yes, actually, Lisa, could you ask them for four fresh glasses, actually, and a little bit more ice? Yes, please. Okay. It's the first time I've ever forgot to put the, the actual liquor in. It's the best oh, part. I was, I was. I was promoting uh, temperance. <laughs> okay. I just got so excited for the shaking part. All right, if you're at home, I wanted to go over the skin anyway, because I feel like we moved through it pretty quickly here. Your basil and your jam in the large shaker, in the small shaker, 
all your liquid ingredients. We have one ounce of fresh lemon juice per drink, three quarters ounce of simple syrup. In this one, we have a few basil leaves per drink, and then one heaping tablespoon of uh, your jam, okay? And now, of course, the best part. <laughs> two ounces of your favorite bourbon. That's what this drink was made for. So can you tell us why you chose a large tonight? Well, I think that you, you can and should choose whatever you like. Um, I, I don't know if you were here when I was talking to Yaz, our manager. We had something else out here and we decided to switch. And I just thought, what we had out here was Evan Williams 1783, which is one of my favorites. If we're making an old fashioned. This is just a little smoother, more approachable, and I think it will play with these flavors a little bit better. The 1783, I think, a little rougher around the edges. Good for an old fashioned because all that flavor still comes through. But for this drink, we want something soft and easy that, that's going to not cover up the peach and the, the basil. Okay. All right, and if you're at home, I mentioned our cold draft. <laughs> Sorry, that's so very nice. I mentioned our cold draft tubes here. If you're at home, you might want to use, uh, well, you will be using your tubes out of the freezer. You might not want to shake quite as long as me just because you're going to dilute it faster. Our tubes are these super dense, thick cocktail tubes made specifically for this. There we go. Garnish that one. Yeah. We take them out to our friends out there. <laughs> All right, I'm going to make one more round oh, real fast. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they were cheering. They were cheering. Cheers. All right, let's do it one more time. Yep, let's see the basil. No, I think that's perfect. And let's do, yep, two of those. Okay, we have our modifiers in this one. You want to do this one? Yes. Okay. Lemon, two ounces. We'll do it in this one. It doesn't matter if you do it in the other one. Three quarter per per drink. That's right. Two ounces per drink. We like it strong. Okay. So I know it's counterintuitive, but when you hold it up here, it gives you more control. Oh. I think. I think that's what most people find. Yeah. Okay. It does. Now, should we buy one of these? The uh, pour stuff? Yeah. Uh, if you make a lot of cocktails, maybe. If you're not making a ton of cocktails, then you just pour it out of the bottle. For us, it helps a little bit with speed at the bar. Okay. Okay. And then, you ready for your shake weight workout? Yeah. Okay. Ice. Ice. 
Lots of ice. Ice is your friend. All right. There we go. Okay. Give us a good seal. Test it out. Give it a yeah, there you go. It's perfect. You drop that on the ground and won't bust it. A little more. A little more. Hurt it. Yeah, let me, let me see. Just there we go. Okay. Break that seal. Right here. Right here. The heel. Right here on the big one. There you go. Almost. Let me give it. There you go. And then my. Your cocoa strainer. Hold on. Hawthorne strainer. We getting it, guys. Thank you. Okay, good. I the question was if I have any shaking strategies or tips and I tell you what I usually say is just get a good seal hand on top hand on bottom engage the core and try to break that ice that's in there that's how hard you should shake yeah um and there's a lot of people out there that have a, a much sexier shake than me. They have like this rhythm going, but my, uh, that way it is. <laughs> yes, better job than me. Thank you. So these came out really great at home. Good, I hear they came out really good at home. Yes. Good. <laughs> I didn't know if you could hear us. I can hear you. I can hear oh. you. Okay. So I'll tell you a little bit about shaking though, and I'll tell you why it's so important and why I say try to break that ice. Um, that's what we were talking about here at, at DRAM. Uh, it really is important because, it, you know, some drinks we shake and some drinks we stir. The reason we shake is we're trying to chill it down. Obviously, we're trying to dilute it. But you're also trying to aerate it right? That's what you do with all that ice tumbling in there. And that's why you want to shake like, uh, like you mean it. Because if you if you take a drink, same ingredients, make it totally the same, and you stir it and you shake it, and then you pour it into a glass, it'll look different, it'll taste different. But if you take a drink and you have somebody, you've been to these bars where they do this lazy shake like that, where they barely do anything and they serve it to you and it's lukewarm, it's not even chilled. If you taste that versus a properly shaken drink, it will still, it'll taste different. When you shake it like that, you're fully emulsifying all the ingredients and you're fully mixing everything and you won't believe it, but it's true. You'll, you'll have a totally I different experience. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Comment was they, they watch Bar Rescue, so they, they believe me. Okay, good. All right, so that's our first drink. And then the second drink, we're gonna take our time because we're gonna let you all finish your drinks, right? Can I taste that one? Okay, great. It's a uh, man for two ounces of booze. For two ounces of booze, that is a very drinkable, approachable drink, right? I know you said this was the summer one, and you said they had what would be your bottle one? Oh, I think that one, you know, it's it's all about the flavors, right? So peach is kind of more of a summertime thing. Basil is an anytime thing. I think uh, in the fall, we move more towards like uh, maple syrup and, you know, walnut or that kind of thing. You just, in my head, I would tweak this a little bit. Um, well, and a good, it, this can be fall and winter because the whole idea behind jam is you take the summer harvest or what's left over and you preserve it so you have it through the fall and, and, this, and the winter. Um, so this is good. I, I just... Peach is a very summertime flavor to me. 
but you could switch up that that jam and do something more fall uh, appropriate. And really, when it goes into fall and winter, I'm less of a shaken drink with juice and more of a stirred drink, boozier, right? A little stronger. So if we made like an old fashioned type drink with the flavors I just said, you know, we take a couple ounces of Larson, you'd just be fine. If we were actually doing that, I'd probably keep the Evan Williams 1783 because again, all the great flavor would still shine through. But when you're stirring it, you'd be mellowing it out a little bit and you add maple syrup instead of sugar. And then you'd add black walnut bitters instead of Angostura bitters and all those flavors play together and then garnish it with an orange because all those, again, all those flavors play well together. And it's just a boozier, heartier drink than that. That's a very drinkable, chuggable almost drink, isn't it? <laughs> yes, sure. And apple cider is, yes, absolutely, yes, is fall and winter. And every Christmas we do an apple cider that's bourbon based. So how are we doing at home? Do you have any thumbs up? Anybody want to quick pop in and just say, we made a drink, we didn't make a drink. I know Angela and a friend made a drink. <laughs> okay. What about our other friend? Quick question. Say it again? I think it would work with uh, apricot instead of peach. About oh, the same? I think it would be great. All right. I think it would be great, yes. Uh, very much the same. A uh, little tartar maybe, but I, I think it would be just perfect. Perfect. And then for your garnish for that drink too, we just did a basil sprig. You could do a couple of slices of peaches if we're in the middle of summer, right? You could do some dehydrated peaches, which we actually have here that we use at the bar a lot. Um, you can do it every one. I just always like the, the garnish to play well with the drink, right? Your first garnish, of course, is your glassware that you choose. So choose a sexy glass. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, the, the, whatever else you put on there should be edible and it should, you know, have some aesthetic you know, it should have maybe some color contrast or match the color and it should play into the drink, right? So you could do even like a lemon or a dehydrated lemon. That would be okay. So we have lemon in there. That's right. And that's, that's the best part of the, the herb as a garnish. It offers a little bit of a, a aromatic right before you get into the drink. Same with our old fashions. You know, if you do an orange zest and you just put those orange oils into the drink, as you approach it, you're going to get a little bit of that orange on the nose. You're not really going to get it on the palate too much, but it's a nice, pleasant smell right before you dive into that drink. So I'm going to slowly move on to our next drink. And we have two versions of this drink, okay? We have the magazine version which is again approachable and kind of a, a 101 level for uh, as far as making it and easily drinkable in the summer oh look at my look at this look at how great they are <laughs> everything i need right here <laughs> so for those of you at home this is the, the actual bar <clears throat> So the magazine version is really, uh, it's very, very much like an adult lemonade. Who wants to come up here and help me for this one? Okay. And make sure we don't forget the booze. Okay, so we're gonna make this one with lemon again. And our other ingredients is gonna be our Earl Grey infused uh, simple syrup. Okay. okay. Um, and let's see, the most important ingredient. All right. No, no modifiers on this one though, just the garnish at the end. So we'll start off and do an ounce of our lemon, okay. And do, I guess I'm doing two again. And I'm going to do, hey, you want to jump right in there? Two, two one ounce pours or one two ounce pour in there. And then again, we're going to do an ounce this time of our sweetener. 
basically we're just making an Earl Grey infused lemonade here, right? I'll let you do the second one. Can I do another one? Yeah, do one okay. more in there. Yes, Earl Grey infused simple syrup. So oh. one part sugar, one part water, but we infuse it with Earl Grey. Uh, and just, you know, that's a black tea with some bergamot, some orange flavor to it. You infuse the hot water first, then you add the sugar. Well, I, I'll, I'll tell you, when you make simple syrup, here you go, give me two, two ounce pours in that one. Yes. You make a simple syrup. All it is is hot water and sugar. If you want to make it out of the faucet, just get that water piping hot. Do you measure out one cup, put one cup of water in there, stir until it's all blended. If you do it on the stove, that's fine. I do it like that all the time, especially if you're making a big batch. Just don't let your water boil, 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 because you're evaporating the water and it's reducing the water to, you know, a, a, a less water, more sweetener, right? You're making a stronger, simple syrup that way. If you're doing an Earl Grey infused, heat the water, steep the tea, let it sit, pull the tea bags out, add the water while it's still warm, stir until it's totally dissolved. Still simple, right? That's the same way we would do if we were making like a basil simple syrup. We can do that as well. We would do one cup of water, one cup of sugar. We do one cup of basil, you know, tightly packed. Add it in there, not to boiling water, because you don't want to ruin your herbs like that. But, you know, still warm. Let it steep like tea, but not boiling. And then just, you know, let it sit for, I'd say, probably about 10 minutes. Taste when that, when that, flavor is infused, strain it out. And it'll turn just a little bit of a, you know, greenish tint to it. Um, and there's other ways to do it, but that's the simplest, easiest way to do it. That's to keep it truly simple, right? Simple syrup. So I really like this one, the original Miley Gray. It's on the menu that comes out next week. Yes. Oh, everything and we're, we're probably, gonna 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 probably gonna make a version of that if we have time. Let's see if we have our ice. Oh, look at that, we have ice. So good. All right. So, and notice we didn't add our ice. We just talked about the simple syrup and herbs and all of that, right? But our drink's just waiting for us right here, right? Whenever we're ready. So. All right, ice is our friend. I'm gonna be your bar back and put your ice in there. Try not to put my hands all over this. All right. Ice is your friend. You're making cocktails always. And now we just pour this right on top here like this, right? Good. We're making two cocktails at a time. Gives a good seal. Test it out. Great. Okay. Now, hand on top, hand on bottom. Engage the core. There we go. Good. Yeah, right on the get it floor. off. I can't do that part. So if you squeeze, you want to squeeze a little bit with this hand and hit it. it and then, oh, you got a good seal there. <laughs> and sometimes if it's really tight, you get up bang it on the table. All right. Now, get your tea strainer and your Hawthorne strainer ready. And you'll go ahead and close that gate. Right? Yeah, you want it to go right over the top of the rim like that. You're getting maximum strain. Okay. Okay. Right. And here, go ahead and pour that into these few glasses here. It's all tricky. It's yeah. Oh, look at that perfect pour. Perfect pour. It's got two Two strands coming out there. That's damn right, picture worthy. Oh, All right. Elegant. I used to want to be a bartender tonight as well. <laughs> there we go. Almost perfect. Okay, almost perfect. Let's do. Uh, I think we have dehydrated lemons over there. All right. It would be great right now. Lisa, would you mind grabbing us a couple? 
couple of straws. Oh, and one more glass, please. All right. So I think that's good. We also, we wanted to pretty it up a little bit. You want to pretty it up a little bit? Sure. Just take a little bit of these rose petals. Did you do the soda? Yeah. Say it again. Did you do the soda water yet? I didn't do the soda water yet. Oh, that's after. You grab me soda water. <laughs> I didn't. I'll tell you what I did do with mine was while we were pouring hers, I took mine off the ice and poured it into this large shaker. So this drink is done, right? Mm -hmm. But it's not sitting on the ice diluting more. All right. Okay. And that's just to extend the drink a little bit there. All right. All righty, here you go. You're all done. This is for Lisa and I, right? No, this is for. Okay, so I got mine off the ice. I'll just go ahead and pour it right into the glass and on the ice. Just extends the drink, livens up the drink. Uh, there's no difference. It's carbonated water. No, we actually dehydrate our own food. Yes. <laughs> Yay, it's pretty, I love it. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Okay, cheers everybody. So that's a, that's a fancy adult lemonade right there. Well, and that was, that was the request from our state magazine to make some fancy adult lemonade for the summer. So this one, very summer feel, right? Mm -hmm. But this is, uh, how about a cheers to the end of the summer? Well into the fall now. Cheers. cheers. Which one did you like better? The first one. Yeah. I hear first one online and here. I think so too, uh, especially this time of year, right? We're still into the fall. That this has much more of a summer feel to it, much lighter. Yeah, you could always make this with bourbon if you're such a bourbon fan. Mm -hmm. yeah. But in the middle of July, when it's super hot and you're by the pool, uh, I mean, this is like this is chuggable, right? Yeah, go ahead and try that. <laughs> so let's pause while we're drinking our drinks and see if we have any questions. So we talked about why we shake drinks, right? How, how straight, we have a dehydrator here and it's relatively inexpensive. You can get one at home off of Amazon for. Can we do one in the oven? Can you do what? Oh yeah, you actually you can do it in the oven. There's ways to do it in the oven at like 100 degrees. Just let it sit for an hour or so. I mean, it takes a little while, but. 
at the bar, one of the reasons we do di- dehydrated fruit is we waste less, right? Yeah. yeah. And it's still like uh, if we're a lot of times when we're presenting a drink like that, there's enough lemon in there, yeah. there's enough acid in there. You could serve it with a, a lemon wedge. That would be a perfectly fine garnish, but we're giving it to you with the perfect amount of acid in it. If you take that lemon and squeeze it in there, you're going to make it more acidic and maybe throw off the balance, at least according to us. So that's another reason why we like the dehydrated fruit. It still gives a little bit of the essence, a little bit of the, the smell, but doesn't affect the flavor. Yeah, and it, it's still it's pretty. It works with the drink, right? It's a little color contrast. But um, but that's – and we just, you know, we – we try to compost here. We try to not be wasteful. We try to, we love Mother Earth here. I do have another question. Yeah. I would put it in the fridge, put it in the fridge, and it'll last, I would say, a week. After about a week, I'd get rid of it. Um, but yes, definitely refrigerate it because sugar water, especially one to one sugar water, eventually you're going to get something funky in it. But if you refrigerate it, you should be fine for a week. Oh, so like well, you know, it's a good question. This is a 12 ounce bottle. Um, you know, I think if you start off with one cup of sugar and one cup of water, you're going to do at least that much, right? And that much is going to last you a lot. 12 ounces, we're using usually about three quarters of an ounce at a time, right? So that's uh, 16 portions, I think, of that at least. Okay, what about at home? Do we have any any questions? No, we don't have any questions. <laughs> okay, should we make one more drink? Yes, yes a winter bourbon one. <laughs> Say again, the bourbon one? A winter bourbon one. Winter bourbon one, okay. Should we go off script and do a, a winter bourbon one? Okay. Yay! <laughs> Okay, I was going to do another version of that one, but I'd rather do, okay. Okay. <laughs> all right, we're all going to go off script. Let me, let me think for one second. I'm probably going to have to gather another ingredient. Yes, tell us what we need so we can go get it. Okay, well, let me think what you would have uh, readily available at home. Do you have okay. bitters at home? Bitters? Any kind of bitters? I do. Okay, bitters. Yes. Um, I want to stick with bourbon. Um, okay, do we have uh, some maple syrup? Do we? Do you want to do a, a maple old fashioned like the drink I just talked about? Oh yes. Very fall. Yeah. Okay. All right. Can you give me one second. I'm going to go off screen and I'm going to get the ingredients that we need. I'm going to show you how to make this drink. Yeah. Maple syrup. Maple I 
Marie World to, to replace the people there. And Got a quick question from home. Okay, yes. <laughs> um, what what month was the were the uh, recipes in our state magazine? Uh, you know what I have that here? June, I believe. Lisa, these recipes were in the June issue of our state magazine. Is that right? Um, I think do... Yes, published in June 2021 of our state magazine. Yep. Thank you. Okay, yes. So we'll send you a link to the recipes and a link to the video. Um, all right, so let's, I'm going to go through the ingredients and the tools that we have for this drink, okay? So this is, um, well, I feel like if you have a drink, I should have. So this is a different, different style of drink, right? This is going to be a stir drink. So we have our mixing glass, okay? Use anything at home. Use a pint glass, use your uh, you know, the big end of your shaker, if you want, here's an aluminum mixing glass. That's fine. I like the clear ones because you can see what's going in it. We're going to use a stirring spoon. If you don't have a fancy one like this, you use whatever you have at home, right? I'll show you a little secret about stirring when we get to it. And then our ingredients, make sure, do we have another Hawthorne stirring? Let's see if our, give me a jolt stirring. Julep strainer? Okay. So we're gonna need a strainer again. Okay, we can use a Hawthorne strainer, that's just fine. Traditionally, we use a julep strainer. We'll see if they get me one. Oh, look at that. It's like magic. All right. Julep strainer, you can use either one, it's just fine. You're trying to get strain, that's it. This is just more traditional back in the day, right? Um, and that's what we're used to doing. <laughs> now our ingredients, a little sip of whiskey. And then if we're, <laughs> if we're making this as a bar, we'll start with our least expensive ingredient, our modifier. So it would be, we have, this is Angostura bitters here. This is the all purpose bitter that you probably have at home. It has the oversized label on it. It's usually a bottle about this big. We use bottles about this big. And then we put it in this just because we go through it so quickly. What I'd really like to use for this drink though these Fee Brothers Black Walnut Bitters. And these are not super hard to find. Probably at Total Wine, maybe at, uh, probably not Hope, maybe Fresh Market. Certainly on Amazon, right? Uh, Angostura Bitters is just the, the, the one that you might find at Harris Teeter, right? So this is just a little bit off the beaten path. But Fee Brothers is pretty common. They have a lot of different uh, flavors available. They're glycerin-based. So that's why they're you can order them over Amazon because they're not alcohol based, right? So um, one thing to be careful about these two though, these bottles are usually like this. They have a larger kind of spout at the top there. Angostura is the all purpose, all forgiving bitter. You use two dashes of this. You could use eight dashes of this. Um, you know, some people prefer it one way or the other. You're not going to kill the drink if you use too much bitters. This, these bitters are actually bitter. They use too much you might kill the drink. So just be careful. A lot of times when I use these, I put my thumb over the spout and just, I'm a little more cautious. You can always add more later, but uh, you can't take it away. So anyway, our bitters, Angostura, which you probably have at home. I'll use the black walnut bitters. Our sweetener is going to be. Yeah, okay. Our sweetener, we're gonna use maple syrup. Um, I, you know, there's grade A, grade B. I think that goes more by color than quality. Uh, I would just say use real maple syrup, right? If you have some fancy bourbon infused maple syrup, you want to try that? Sure. I like the regular uh, maple syrup. It's high quality. Don't use the high fructose maple flavored syrup that you find at the grocery store sometimes. And then uh, our bourbon, and I'm real particular about old fashions with bourbon. I think Evan Williams 1783 is a inexpensive, perfectly made bourbon for old fashions. If you're gonna use something else, you can use whatever you want. We can use the Florsen, it would be just fine. Um, the reason I like this one is out of the bottle, it's just fine. Over the rocks, it's just fine. A little rough around the edges, that's it. 
And when you stir it, all you're doing is sanding off those edges. So all the great flavor comes through, but it's just, a, a, and it plays well with the maple syrup with the sweetener and everything. If you're going to use something else with Manhattans and with old fashions, I really like using something 90 to 100 proof most of the time, something a little bit stronger. Just, uh, you know, if you use something 80 proof, you're putting it over ice and you're watering it down already. It's just going to thin out too much. So something in the mid 90s is usually a good way to go. What so, bourbon is that again? I couldn't see that. What bourbon is that? Evan Williams, 1783. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yes. No problem. And this is, uh, like I said, relatively inexpensive. Go to old fashioned bourbon. If you want to use something else, just fine. But uh, that's that's a uh, an underappreciated bourbon, I think, for the first price point. All right, so let's start off. I'm going to make one to start, and then you're going to make four. All right. <laughs> so if we were going to use the Angostura bitters, I would hit, I would hit two or three dashes, right? And like I said, it's very forgiving. If you want to get a little heavier on the bitters, it's fine. We're using these black walnut bitters, so I'm going to do just my like to Just be a little careful. And then get something in there. I'm being too careful. There we go. Okay. So I got a little bit more. There we go. I got about four or five, six drops. Okay. Not too strong. Like I said, you'd always add more later. You can't take any away. And now when I make this at the bar, I just use my bar spoon as my measuring device. So this is a European bar spoon. You're good at it and you have steady hands. There we go. All right. That's one. I'm going to do one more. So each bar spoon roughly is about an eighth of an ounce. So we do two, that's a quarter of an ounce. And it's up to you, right? You're making it at home. If you like it a little sweeter, you can add a little bit more. I like things not too sweet. So I'm going to stay right at that quarter ounce mark. Okay. And then I'm going to do two ounces of our bourbon. All right. That's the perfect amount for one cocktail. Okay. Let's see if my bar back's available. Can I get uh, some rocks glasses, four rocks glasses, and uh, some fresh ice, please? Thank you. My bar pack is quitting, by the way. So this will, this will officially be our last drink. <laughs> he said he's heading home. So while he gets us our ice, though, let's think about these specs, okay? These are classic specs for an old fashioned. And traditionally, we would use Angostura bitters. We would use, uh, some people like the sugar cube. I hate the sugar cube. I like simple syrup, whether it's brown sugar, simple syrup, or white sugar, simple syrup. I feel like you have more control. Sugar cubes aren't all the same size. I feel like no matter what you do, no matter how, whether you, uh, you know, muddle it a little bit, mix it with water, try to break it up, it doesn't dissolve all the way. When you drink your drink, you have little sugar granules in your teeth. It's like chewing on sand. I can't stand it. So I use simple syrup, right? And then two ounces of whiskey. Traditionally, bourbon is what I was taught. But if you want to use rye whiskey, I love a rye old fashioned. Traditional specs, right? Some bitters, your sweetener, not too much sweetener too. And then two ounces of booze, that's your base. So if we want to play with that a little bit like we're doing here, we're just altering it a little bit. So no longer an old fashioned, we can call it a maple old fashioned, we call it an autumnal old fashioned, we call it whatever we want, but it's a variation of an old fashioned. We could do the same idea and do it with tequila, right? Make a tequila old fashioned, right? Two ounces of, you know, maybe Reposado or an Anejo Use your agave instead of maple syrup or sugar, right? Because it plays well with the idea of the drink. Um, maybe some orange bitters. That would be your accent flavor and your aromatics. I mean, again, we'd probably garnish it with an, an orange. Um, if you do the same thing with gin, you can do it with different types of whiskey. This is, you know, the classic specs, right? I did not put Angostura. I did just the black walnut. Just the black walnut. All right. 
So now when we're stirring this drink, remember last time, engage the core, hand on top and bottom, try to break the ice? Totally opposite this time, right? Little movement, right? You're not stirring a big bowl of soup. You're not making a lot of noise because you're not trying to aerate it. You're trying to just chill it down and, and dilute it a little bit, right? Watch your wash line come up a little bit. At home, you're gonna have to, you're gonna stir it a lot less because you're using different ice. But you do wanna just mellow it out. Sand off those rough edges, right? And then take your favorite glass, hopefully a old fashioned glass, a rock glass. Put some fresh ice in there. And now you'll, you'll notice, you know, the other drinks that we poured were all light and fluffy. This has a different texture to it, right? A little more velvety, right? A little a more viscous, I think. So let's put this, let's see, we'll use this as our dump because we're gonna, we're gonna make three more of these. All right, and we're gonna garnish this, right? What can we garnish this with? I love an orange zest in there because it'll put the oil right on top that I love. If you want to do a bourbon cherry or a brandy cherry, that's great. Oh, yeah. don't, don't use one of those pink maraschino oh, cherries that are just sweet and don't belong anywhere in anyone's diet. Uh, real Luxardo cherries, yes. Yeah. That smells great. Can you smell the black walnut in there? Oh, a little yeah. Bit? Okay. All right, so can I trust you to make a couple of these? Yes, sir. Okay, because I'm going to walk away for a second. I'm oh, going to get some orange and a, and a zester. Okay, so what are we going to do first? Uh, bitters. What are we going to do second? Uh huh. That's the hardest part. Okay. Okay. I'm going to put these right here for you. Here are your ingredients. There are your tools. I'll be right back. I'll get garnishes for all of us, okay? Sounds good. All right. All right. How's it going? Going all right? Orange and investor. Oh. How much whiskey did you use? I mean, right, bourbon. 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 Two, two ounces. Oh, okay. I didn't put enough in. <laughs> You'll get, for us, when we're doing it, it's kind of, it's a timing thing. You also watch your wash line to watch the, the, the dilution, right? Mm -hmm. Depending on the vessel that you're using. Okay. The water, the line will come up a little bit. Okay. All right. And I think you're, you're good. Yeah, I think you're real good. And let's get your oh, yeah. rocks glass ready. Okay. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how it tastes. Okay. <laughs> I, I'll tell you about that and watch. This is our, our garnish. This is yours. So we'll take our orange garnish here. And we're going to do this right off the side of the glass. And we do this, watch, you see, 
the oils come out a little bit. The lighter oils will come off, fly into the glass. That's kind of that orange essence. The heavier oils, they'll kind of fall away. Gravity will grab that and it won't end up in the glass. Those are the more bitter flavors. The subtle, minor little thing, but you know, if you're doing it, you want to be the best you can. So don't do it right over it. Do it right off the sides of the glass, okay? That's yours. I hope it's is that any good. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So somebody had asked to ask the, the spec how much whiskey. I said two ounces. This is the traditional spec, right? This is the uh, or at least it's it's what most cocktail bars are going to use these days. If that's too much for you. Use a little bit less. If I you use, want I something sweeter, go ahead. I heard somebody at home saying they used five ounces. That's a lot. <laughs> I'm just kidding. They didn't say that. They didn't say that. <laughs> so Ann used a little less. I used a little more. <laughs> All right. That's delicious. I'm going to make two more. We'll go over it one more time. We can talk about more variations if we like. Um, yes. Yes, you're really. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> if you have any hints of honey instead, because I I raise bees. Love to know how to use I only heard part of our friend at home. There was something about honey and raising bees. Say it one yeah. more time for me. Just if you could say anywhere in the recipes that we use today where we might could use honey. That would be awesome. Yeah. Or if you have a recipe that you love with honey, that would be great too. So I love to use honey in cocktails uh, as the, the sweetener, right? And I'll tell you the, the, the question was about honey and, and raising bees and having, it sounds like you have, you have plenty of honey. You want to figure out how to use it in cocktails. Um, yes. The main difference with uh, honey and sugar is you know, honey uh, kind of hits your palate and fades faster, way faster than sugar. Sugar hits your palate faster than anything and just kind of lays there. And what it does, it's kind of like a delivery method. It, it uh, delivers all the other flavors. It's not just sweetness that it gives you. It's, it's like a highway, opens up the highway to your taste buds, all the other flavors get there. Honey does that, but it gets there just a touch slower, hits there and fades a lot faster. Okay. okay. That's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing. I think you can sub honey into uh, quite a few cocktails, and there's some classics that call for honey. And we'll talk about an old-fashioned recipe with honey in a second. Um, uh, the, the only thing I would suggest is, you know, honey is just kind of this perfect natural thing. And if you heat honey too much, you change it chemically, molecularly, whatever. I, just, somebody told me technically it's un, inedible once you heat it or if you boil it. I don't know if you heat it, but if you boil it, it's uh, technically inedible. I don't know if that's true or not. I would say if you're using honey and you want to use speed, because at the bar we're going to – honey, the reason why we dilute a lot of things is just to make it pour a little faster so it's a little more workable. Honey is just fine if you're at home measuring it out, but if you want to make a simple syrup with honey, you can add water, add honey, stir it, and you'll see the honey break and just like – you emerge with the water, use warm water, don't use boiling water, don't boil your honey. And keep in mind once you add water to your honey, it's now spoilable, right? Honey yeah. on its own is almost not, never spoilable. If you do add water to it and you want to use it that way, that's fine. Um, but just, you know, then you're going to have to refrigerate it, keep it maybe a week and then get rid of it. Uh, but I, I think you could easily substitute that one-to-one -one honey in for your simple syrup. The only difference that you may notice is that that kind of sweetness will hit the palate and fade real quick. So it'll change the, the taste of your drinks, but not in a negative way and not in an extremely noticeable way. And I okay. think if I were going to do a, I mean, you, you could do a bourbon old fashioned with honey and it would be great. And then we could play around with the bitters as the accent flavor. We could use maybe some of our, uh, friends from Crude Bitters, our local bittery. We can use some of their fun flavors. They have all kinds of, they have like a chocolate and smoke one, um, or I think it's chocolate and sea salt 
and then there's another one with smoke flavor in it. That could be fun. You could do instead of bourbon, maybe try a Tennessee whiskey. So just thinking of that smoke, that little, little bit of smoky flavor. Yeah, Tennessee whiskey and honey, and even orange bitters, Reagan's orange bitters, that's a pretty common bitter available also. But I would play around with some other fun accent flavors in the bitters. Really though, with honey, I would be interested to see what we could do with a gin old fashioned. And I know that's not for everybody, oh, right? That sounds amazing. A what? Gin. Yeah. Fashion. A, a gin old fashioned with honey. And then, um, you know, I like the idea of an orange bitter in there too, but maybe just a little bit and then something else on top of that uh, to make it even more interesting. So maybe two bitters in that one. You do some gin. You have to pick your gin too. You don't want something too floral. Well, maybe you do actually. Maybe you want something. So uh, our, my maybe like Sutler's gin? Yes. Yeah, so my, my honey is close. My beehives are close to a blueberry farm. So we have very wildflower. So, mm -hmm. um, Kendra or gunpowder. So gun again, you want a powder. little bit in and out. So Hendrix has some really cool um, earthy blends and then gunpowder. Have you heard of gunpowder? Yes, yes, yes. Big fan, big fan. I had a yeah. period of time where I drank a lot of gin and tonics. Me too. Um, I, uh, what about, uh, have you had Sutler's gin? Yes. So that's a North Carolina gin. It has a lot of flavors and I think overwhelming coming off the nose and on the palate, at least in the front is a, a lot of orange flavor, like orange zest flavor. I think that would be maybe interesting to experiment with. Um, and well, let's see, what else did I think in there? I had another, had another brand in mind just a second ago. Maybe it'll come back to me as I finish this cocktail. What about uh, Durham Distilleries, Jim? Uh, big fan of Conniption. Uh, really love both their American Dry and their Navy Strength. Um, I think that would be fun to experiment with for sure. Uh, and really, um, let me think. I think that would be good. I really, uh, Durham, the conniption gin, I, I love it. And that is, I see that more of like, a, uh, maybe more of a martini type gin or a Martinez type gin, or, okay. you know, even like a last word or, or a gin and tonic. I feel like that gin is, uh, uh, I don't know. I don't see, I'm sure it would be just fine. It would be wonderful. It's not the first thing that comes to my mind with the, you know, the honey and the orange bitters and all those flavors we were just talking about. Ladies, these are for you. Um, but I'm sure it'd be just great. I, I mean, we're a, we're a huge fans of them overall. And um, I think they're, that their gin works in a bunch of different cocktails. Okay. So asking, why not try it in old fashioned? Just asking because I have that and then Beef Eater London Dry at home, so. That's my, oh, I think that's the, my choice. Yeah. I think the conniption would be much more fun. Uh, Beef Eater is, is great. Again, good product. A uh, little one dimensional, though, for me. And Hendrix, we were just talking about that too with our friends at home. Hendrix would be fun. Yeah, we were talking about that in uh, an old fashioned. Lots of different flavors there, right? Cucumber and some rose petal and things like that. Um, but between your Beef Eater and your conniption, I, yeah, I think the conniption would be. Uh, more interesting, more fun to play with. Okay, cool. Thank you. The beef eater is is a uh, straight up give me a gin and tonic kind of drink for me. Uh, yes, you know, exactly. maybe maybe a martini exactly. also. Yeah, and again, nothing wrong with it. Uh, big fan of beef eater. Just uh, for this, this what we're talking about now. I think uh, conniption is much more complex, more fun to play with. And so, all right, this is our. Oh, sorry. Our Go ahead. More questions. Yeah, uh, Go ahead. Jim. I do have some uh, grapefruit peppercorn bitters. Would that? Do you think that would be interesting to use? I think that would be interesting. With sorry, just give me a quick. I got I got honey and maple syrup all over my hands. Um, <laughs> any anything? Um, I'm sorry. I'm getting I'm getting it from every angle. Here. 
Um, You're doing great. <laughs> thank you. It's been a long day. It's all for charity. It's all for charity. <laughs> Our friends here want to know if you folks at home wish you were here. We Nobody should be too. <laughs> So, and hold on, we were, we were asking about, well, we'll probably do something like this in Raleigh very shortly. So, yes. We'll do it. And I'll tell all of you, listen, all the, the, the we've done so many damn virtual classes over the past year and a half. We've done them for charity. We've done them for Amazon. We've done them for NetApp. We've done them for Palo Alto. We've done them. For charity, again, we've done them for a, one family in Florida. I did a tequila tasting with them. We've done so many of them. The virtual classes are ending. In-person classes are coming back. Eventually, eventually. We're easing into it. We're easing, easing into it. But um, I can't wait to do in-person classes. And I, I think that uh, we'll probably offer that the virtual aspect of it for a long time. But I think uh, there's nothing like in-person. And, oh, we've done it. Yeah, we've done it for all kinds of companies. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's a, let's do a fundraiser for your staff. Well, let, okay, let's do it. They, they all lived through 2020 also. Um, I want to circle back to a question though that we had about uh, grapefruit and peppercorn bitters. And uh, I just, I think that is great flavors to use with gin again i'm sure there's other ways we could use it with um tequila as well i think but gin i think anything with citrus i think gin and, and black peppercorn those flavors a lot of not a lot some gins are infused with a little black peppercorn flavor so that black peppercorn with that gin is going to be it's going to play together great i think which gin, which gin would you go with well, I think our friend was talking about conniption and beef eater. I, I mean, I see that conniption and that grapefruit and black peppercorn being fantastic. I think, I dare I say, it would make that beef eater even better. It would make it even more interesting. So it would work with either one. Um, I think you not, you know, I, I think it would work with a lot of gins, not necessarily with, uh, you know, something like Hendrix, maybe not play so well because there's, so much flavor going on in that one already um but with a lot of a lot of gins i think uh you know we, we've done before where we just take a, a london dry gin that's pretty straightforward like beef eater and we've done a black peppercorn infused simple syrup and tried to you know play around with kind of like a gin old-fashioned type drink yeah so those flavors huh. they play well together in my mind and i think on most people's palates they would so any questions about this last drink? Any questions about technique? Uh, it has been. If it's not on our menu, you can order it. If we have maple syrup, we can make it for you. We almost always have, you should see our bitters collection. It's, you know, overflowing. So we almost always have these bitters. If we don't, we can use something else fun. Uh, but, you know, keep in mind, this is, just think about fall flavors. Let's take our bourbon or even Tennessee whiskey or, you know, Canadian whiskey, I don't know why you would, but um, you can even do Canadian whiskey right? or do a rye whiskey um, and, and, you know, try molasses, try sorghum. You know, we've done a sorghum old fashioned before. Some people like sorghum. I'm not one of those people. I'm not personally one of those people. I don't think it's terrible, but it's, it's not, I don't know. I'd rather have molasses than sorghum, but any kind of sweetener you can play around with and, um, if you're at home, you don't have to dilute it. You know, we don't dilute the maple syrup because it's, this is bliss maple syrup. And this is, oh, this is something that, um, oh, I think we ordered this for another class that we did a long time ago. Um, but anyway, you know, at home, you don't need to dilute these things. We don't dilute the maple syrup because it has the right viscosity for us. Uh, agave syrup we dilute because it just makes it a little faster to deal with at home you don't have to do that you don't have to dilute your honey you don't have to dilute your molasses if you want to make a little batch and put it in the fridge and have a weekend or two of making cocktails with that 
sweetener, then, then go ahead and do that. Uh, but you don't have to. And, and uh, play around with it. You have the classic specs now. So play around. Some things in and out. Um, you know, try different liquors, different base liquors, try different sweeteners, try different accent flavors. The one thing you cannot do, though, is make something different than an old-fashioned and call it an old-fashioned, right? An old-fashioned is a very specific drink. This is a maple old-fashioned, right? You're qualifying it. You're letting me know it's not exactly an old-fashioned, but it's close to it. And you're never, ever, ever allowed to call anything a new-fashioned. You go to a bar and they have a new-fashioned on the menu, run away, run away. Don't drink anything there. Don't even drink a beer there. New fashion. I have never not heard a drink. of fashion. I unfortunately have. Oh it's my never God. been good. <laughs> so. The, the question was, what's my favorite cocktail to drink and what's my favorite cocktail to make? And the answer to both questions is the one that I'm drinking. <laughs> or the one I'm about to drink. Um, but honestly, no, I'll tell you the, um, I do, I, I like the classics, right? And I like plays off of the classics. There's a, there's a Dram Draft classic that we have now that's been around so long and come back called a Birds and the Bees, which is a play off and of, off off of an old fashioned. We use a little bit of honey and a little bit of cherry tincture as our sweetener. Um, we use orange bitters as the, the accent flavor. And then we actually garnish it with an orange zest and a house brandy cherry. So when I go out to a bar, I'll order an old fashioned or a Manhattan possibly. And that's uh, kind of like the bartender handshake. If you can make that drink, and it's okay. And I'll go on and I'll order some of your specialty cocktails and try them. If you can't make that drink, then I'm drinking beer and wine for the rest of the night if I'm staying at all. Uh, and I, I'm telling you, you know, the story about the new fashion is true. I've seen it on the menu and I have to laugh every time I see it. It's, it's something terrible. That's all you need to know. It's not, it's not a thing. It's not a thing. That's my point. Yeah. Yeah. If it's, a, it's, a, it's a play off of an old fashioned that's not good because nobody that respects this classic drink would call it a new fashion. Uh, but if you can make an old fashioned, and I'll tell you, I've had an old fashioned before over crushed ice that was cloyingly sweet. And, you know, you drink that and you try to be polite and get halfway through it, but it's, it's, it's hard to get through and you're not going to order any other cocktails after that. Certainly, right? Because there's certainly a terrible, 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 terrible drink, period. Certainly a terrible old fashioned. Um, so that's what I like to drink. And what actually what I like to make, it's funny, over all these many years, I've probably made more old fashions than days I've been on this earth, right? I mean, just tens of thousands of them, because it's been the number, it's definitely the number one cocktail at Dram and Draft at all three locations. Over the five years, most of the bars I worked at before that, or cocktail bars in the old fashioned was probably the first or second most popular drink day in, week out, year out. Um, and that's a drink that it's funny. I tell people that work with us now, you know, you make a hundred of these a night, you can get burned out and you just like, Oh my God, another old fashioned. But really what you want to do is every old fashioned that you make, you have to think like, I'm going to make this one even better than the last one. And how do you do that? by making it exactly how you made the last one, right? Just trying to focus, be flawless about it. And that's the definition of craft, right? Making the same thing again and again and doing it perfectly, doing it better than anything, anyone else, that makes you a craftsman. So if you want this to be a craft, then you have to honor your craft, you have to be a craftsman, and you have to make it again and again. So at one point in time, I was sick of making old fashioned, but I thought about it differently and I decided, you know what? I'm going to make this one better than the last one. So it became my favorite drink to make because I made so damn many of them and I think I made it better than anyone else. It's a very good, like, to be honest, it's very good. This is, Old Fashioned in Manhattan been my favorite drink. And I feel like that way of thinking also too, though, is like, because I, I don't know that this is your 100th you've made. 
That's yes. right. And what we try to do is be consistent and have everyone make it the same way. Yeah. Because many years ago, you know, a place I worked, people would come in and be like, oh, thank God you're here. I'm going to order it old fashioned. Uh -huh. When you're not here, I don't order it. They don't make it the same. Yeah. And it's like, oh, well, it's a great compliment, but it's not what we want. We want everyone, we want consistency. But you're right, I do make it the best. <laughs> I, I'm just like Chick fil A. <laughs> Like, we know it's be the same. That's right. Well, and, and not that we're trying to be a corporate restaurant, but we do try to make our old fat, all our cocktails the same way at all locations. So you don't want to come here and have an old fashioned and go to Raleigh and it's a ton sweeter, right? You want it to be exactly the same, made with, you know, almost exactly the same bourbon, hopefully, but same specs, of course, same, same measurement. Uh, that's what we go for here. So any questions at home? Any cheers is this at home? No, but cheers. cheers. You want to cheers them? I don't know. Oh, yeah. them a little bit? Come on, you were all on camera all night. Yay! Yeah. Hey, there. It's all fun. Yeah. 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 We got another cheers. We, didn't got it. we haven't got a cheers from Robert yet, but that's okay. Um, so, uh, my, my I appreciate everybody. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes, I appreciate you all. Um, again, this is something that happened in our state magazine, and this, that's what prompted it way back in June, which means it came out in May. And we wanted to do this here in Durham all summer. We finally got this darn bar open third week in August, and we finally got this event going. Uh, hopefully we do many more of these. Hopefully we have more in person, um, and we'll be doing that in Durham, we'll be doing that in Raleigh, doing that in Greensboro. Always have events going on, so check us out on Facebook, Instagram, sign up for our newsletter if you're not there yet, and uh, thanks for helping us raise $700 for United Way. Yeah, thanks. We always try to do a charity thing too. With this stuff. So we always try that. Fantastic. Thank you so yeah. much. You're welcome. It was my pleasure. And uh, that's right. We did do that. Yeah. Right. We were talking about how all the charity events that we did during the pandemic, all the virtual classes we did during the pandemic, and we'd raise money for, and it was like a $5 or $10 minimum donation. And some people would do 50, some people would do 10. And then we would always match the amount for the charity. Oh, fantastic. Even though our bars were shut down and we were broke, it's mostly because we were just great people. Great person. Um, and also, oh, everybody at home and here next Thursday, October 28th in Raleigh, we're doing our. Halloween party, oh. costume contest, oh. have to come in costume, starts at seven or something like that. I don't know. So much uh, Durham, we're doing an industry Halloween costume on Monday. You're welcome to come to that one. You're welcome to come to that one. It's on Monday though. It's too early. Okay. Oh, a Fernet. Yes. You don't know what Fernet is? Oh. Uh, Fernet is an Italian digestif that has probably 80 or 90 different botanicals in it, herbs and botanicals in it. Um, and, and traditionally, it's kind of like an after dinner drink. So you have a big Italian meal, you sip on a Fernet. First time I had it, I was in Italy and I was I, maybe 21. I don't even know if I was 21. Some <laughs> Italian guy gave it to me that owned the restaurant because we had just spent a little bit of money. You know, we were 21. We're broke we didn't have any money but we spent a little bit of money it's like here drink this and i was like oh what do you do with this i wasn't a big liquor drinker back then i was like sniffing it it's like no you just you know see this and i remember i just took a shot of it and it went down and it didn't come back up but you could feel just it spread through your body you know and the, i had all this pasta and you know veal cutlet and all kinds of stuff in my belly and i was just like i was real full a second ago now i feel like i'm, I'm ready for a second meal <laughs> Um, so what it's turned into, and it has kind of a, a lot of uh, 
licorice kind of a nice flavor to it. Uh, what it's turned into is maybe not so much these days, but back in my day, it was kind of the bartender shot, do a shot of Fernet, and it was just a little different. Um, so it's still pretty popular in the bartender community and the service industry. And on Monday, is that right, Lisa? On Monday, we're doing our industry service industry Halloween party here in Durham, sponsored by Fernet, which anyone is welcome to come to if you want to see a bunch of drunk service industry people. <laughs> I'm I may or may not be one of those people. I'm not sure yet, but uh, it'll certainly be fun. There'll be a lot of Fernet. There'll be people dressed up. Everyone's welcome to do it. But every once in a while, we like to do something very specific for people in our industry just to, you know, give back. Uh, Thursday in Raleigh. And then uh, we're doing the Greensboro one is, is that the day? When, I don't know when they're Greensboro. The <laughs> yes, the 29th is in Greensboro. It's hard for me. So really quickly. Uh, yes, sir. The uh, Fernet and Coca-Cola is also extremely tasty if you don't like the extreme bitterness of the fernet so i i lived in argentina for a long time i lived in buenos aires and fernet there's two places that fernet are made one's in milan italy i believe and the second one is in argentina and buenos aires because it's so popular there and you know argentina has a special relationship with italy uh, even as trade partners and, and heritage so i was down there that was one of the continents that i worked at I worked at a bar down there where we would serve Fernet and Coke by the leader, literally by the leader. And it's funny, the bar that I worked at was owned by a couple of Americans and the Argentines are so particular about things. I'd go, they'd ask for Fernet and Coke and I'd go to make Fernet and Coke and the, they actually used Pepsi because it was pennies cheaper, right? So I'd go to pour the Pepsi in there they'd see the Pepsi and they'd be like, oh, no, no, I don't want it. I don't want it. I'm like, okay, well, this is all we have. Like, I guess I'm not making it. And they're like, oh, okay. All right. Make it, make it, make it. Yeah. My, my wife like, is in, uh, yeah. my wife is in shock over here. She's from Argentina. So she, <laughs> she said, holy crap, no, Fernet and Pepsi. What is this? Yeah. Yeah. They actually did it. And, and, you know, the great thing about those is sweetness from the Coke or the Pepsi cuts that bitterness from the Fernet. And I'll tell you the other thing that I did that blew the, the Portino's mind. I would do a, a shot of Fernet straight and I'd offer it to them and they'd be like, oh, what are you, crazy? No way. Where's the Coca-Cola? And I'd be like, oh man, Fernet's great by itself. They wouldn't do it. And they also, they loved Bronca. There are other brands of Fernet, but they just, they weren't having it. I worked at a, an American sports bar down there and it was quite an experience it was a lot of fun actually excellent cheers uh, i still still can't speak argentinian i know a little spanish but can't speak argentinian thank you so much okay uh you're welcome on that joke that didn't seem to land we're gonna <laughs> sign off we're laughing here i just meet too quickly <laughs> Okay. Thank you, guys. <laughs> all right. It was our pleasure. I hope to see you all here at, in Durham and or Raleigh and or Greensboro sometime soon. Thank you again for joining us. Thanks for helping us raise some money. We're signing off. Have a great night. Enjoy the rest of your drinks. <laughs> <laughs>